I, 30 female, grew up in a middle class family. I have a sister, Elle, who is three years older than me. Some of my earliest childhood memories, my parents are characterizing me as the pretty one and Elle as the smart one. Elle has an IQ in the 150 range. She was always at the top of her classes at school with little effort when I struggled to make B's. When it came time for college, Elle was accepted into some of the best schools in the country and ended up enrolling in the top 10 university. While I always kind of wondered how they were affording this, I kind of assumed that they were taking out loans for whatever financial aid didn't cover. However, when I was a senior in high school, I found out how Elle's tuition was being funded. With the inheritance my grandparents left, with the intention it would be used for both of our schooling. Elle had one year left at university and the money was nearly gone. They made it clear with my grades they would rather the money go to finish off Elle's undergrad education. I was left with a choice, loans or no school. I ended up working full time to afford a rented apartment with friends while going to community college nursing school on the side. It took me a little longer but I graduated with honors. I got a great job at a local hospital and ended up meeting my now husband who was a second year general surgery resident at that time, my very first day on the job. Fast forward eight years. My husband is a surgeon and I went back to school to become a CRNA. We are very comfortable financially, happily married and I'm pregnant with our first child, a girl. Through this time, I have maintained minimal contact with my parents and sister. I had a ton of resentment and allowed my relationship with them to grow colder over the years. I was aware my sister had gone to get her MA and PhD though I had no idea how this was funded and I didn't care to ask. About a month ago, I get a call from my mother who didn't even know I was pregnant. Apparently, my sister is struggling under the weight of multiple private loans while working on an entry-level research job. She is living with my parents who co-signed the loans and is having a hard time. She asked if my husband and I would give them a loan to take care of my sister's loans for the next few years and take some pressure off of her. It was pretty clear to me that that loan really meant a gift. I unloaded on her. I told her that I spent my entire childhood being dismissed and ignored while my brilliant sister was put above me constantly. They used my college money on her and I had to take out loans which I paid for myself. So now that their pretty daughter has managed to make something of herself, they have used for her once again to prop up their smart daughter. My mother was crying and saying that this isn't true over and over again. Then my father jumped on the phone and demanded to know what I said to her. I hung up. My husband is very proud of me for standing up for myself and finally speaking about my trauma which has been weighing on me for years and while i know it was the right thing why do i still feel like shit i imagined this moment a thousand times but i also thought it would come with a sense of relief now i'm doubting myself and wondering if i made the wrong choice on addressing the problems i have with my mother in such a way and on the other hand while i'm not close with my sister i know she is as much as a victim as i am she put all her value into being the smart daughter and look where it got her i'm extremely conflicted by the whole situation and don't know what to do I'm 23. When I was 15, my dad died. My mom, 45, didn't wait too long to start over and moved her new partner in just two months later. My dad left everything to me and not a dime to her. They weren't married. My dad's will was so structured that she couldn't even challenge it. And she attempted to even ask me to pass over one of my properties to her to show my new dad that he was welcomed. I couldn't even if I wanted to because my dad's will was specified that I must be 21 to have access to everything he left me. This dude has kids, 18 male and 19 female. Their ages now. And my mom prioritized them to keep him happy. I mean, she wasn't like abusive or neglectful, but she tended to favor them. They went on trips. And even if she didn't tell me not to go, she'd say something between the lines of, wouldn't you like to go to your grandparents? My dad's better. I mean, I'm not stupid and I know that she didn't want me there. When I turned 17, she asked me to leave my own house because I kept fighting with her dude and I also reminded him of whose house it was. When he wanted to play the man of the house, I also called him John Conroy. My grandparents told me to avoid the confrontation so I went to live with them. My mom would visit me often and tell me how much she loved me but that she needed to keep the peace at home. After college, I decided to check my properties and also the one that my mom was living at. I wanted to renovate it to rent it out since it's a good one and could help me afford my masters. I went there to inform my mom but no one was there. Later, I found out they went on vacations. I called her but she didn't answer so I proceeded to change the locks, mainly to officially take possession. They arrived yesterday and couldn't get in. Of course, they called me but I wasn't even in town. I went today because some renovation works will start in a few weeks. I was in the backyard and my mom came in furious yelling at me saying how dare I do that. So we talked and I let them know that they have two weeks to leave. Her husband, an unemployed, oh sorry, self-employed, was furious. My mom and her stepdaughter started crying because the girl is pregnant. I'm sorry but I made up my mind. My mom's family is shaming me and calling me an a-hole. Am I the asshole for changing all the locks in my house without letting my mom know? I'm 17 and my little sister, 15, is turning 16 in November. We are complete opposites. I'm more into partying and hanging with my party-loving friends while my sister is into reading and she doesn't dance. She's in love with musicals and that's all she listens to with the addition of some popular artists. She has a nice friend group. They're okay to say the least, but they pretty much have the same interests as her except that they're more bent when it comes to music choices. My mother threw me a sweet 16 and it was amazing. It was held at a big place, lots of music, food, gifts, and full of my favorite things. My sister the entire time sat on her phone in the corner and only got up to eat. She only started talking to people once it was time to pack things up. My mother recently asked my sister what she wants for her sweet 16 and she said that she wants a party. My mother didn't respond and I overheard her and my father last night speaking to her last night about how she can't have a party. My mother thinks that she isn't a normal teenager who would usually enjoy a good sweet 16 party. In my mother's words, I'm not throwing a party for you to sit around the entire time. 
at that point, I'm entertaining your friends, not you. My father is siding with my mother, saying that he supports her interests, but it would be best to put the money into something else instead of a big sweet 16 party. I could tell my sister's excitement about the party died down for a little bit. This morning, I saw her on her computer in the living room looking up sweet 16 parties and cheap places to have them at. I asked her why she was looking at the pictures and she said that she wanted to compare them to the sweet 16 I had, since she wants the same one too, but cheaper so our parents wouldn't be mad about how expensive it'll be. I told her that she wouldn't have the same things as me because she isn't a normal person at big events, even if it's about her, and that she's better off just hanging out with her friends at a mall or something to get the expenses out of the way. She called me an asshole and ran into her room and our father said that I shouldn't have said that to her. I understand that sweet 16s are a big thing, but it wouldn't be wise to spend so much time and money on an event like this where she'll look bored. I suggested she just go out with friends bowling or to their houses and she screamed at me calling me an asshole once again and slammed the door in my face. I'm just trying to help my parents and her out. Am I the asshole for telling my sister she can't have the same sweet 16 I had since she isn't a normal teenager? I am not a big fan of alcohol. I don't enjoy being around drunk people. I can only occasionally enjoy the taste. I'm not about alcohol culture, really. I also have social anxiety and don't like bar crowds, though I make exceptions for live music. That said, I will happily DD for any of my friends if they want to go out and have a good time. I prefer it when they tell me that they want to be picked up and I can go get them later as opposed to spending the whole time with them as they get sloshed. But I can be convinced to bar hop with them on one condition. If we go out to dinner, they have to cover my bill. If no dinner, then they're stuck covering my cokes all night. Though, I admit I was told by the bartender friend to tell the bartender that I'm a DD and I make it my drinks for free. It works sometimes. It doesn't have to be steak or something expensive. I'm not demanding anyone to buy me a $50 plate nor would I do that to my friends. I just expect the ones that are drinking to split the cost of my usually $15 to $20 dinner in exchange for me spending gas. I don't charge them for it, and time in an environment I don't enjoy. I was laughing and explaining it to a new friend and he called me an asshole and that my payment should be my friends getting home safe. I replied they could get home safe without me going because I'd go get them. This is the cost for making me hang where I'm uncomfortable. He said it's even worse because I'm charging them to hang out with me. Am I the asshole for making my friends cover my dinner if I DD for them while bar hopping? I, Jane, 21, was one of Vanessa's 21 three bridesmaids and her wedding was held at a remote lodge venue up in a mountain. When everyone got to the lodge, we did a drive run of the ceremony and surveyed the place. I assumed that the men would go to their cabin and the women would go to ours and we'd relax before the wedding. Instead, the men immediately headed to the liquor store and the groom and the bride's mothers began ordering the bridesmaids to move furniture into the place. That night, the women did everything from dragging 250 chairs out of the shed and setting them up to hauling furniture down two flights of stairs and positioning it in other places. Since I was the tallest and strongest person in the group, it was mostly on me to haul the larger pieces around and the mother and mother-in-law of the bride largely stood around talking about details with her. I asked repeatedly if the groom and groomsmen could be called to help, but was told that we didn't want to bother them and that they're out unwinding before the big day. The father of the bride has a heart condition and the father-in-law was much older and walking with a cane, so he couldn't help out either. At the end of two very sweaty hours, I had splinters, blisters, and was covered in sweat, but everything was set up. During the wedding, I learned that the bride and groom were trying to avoid all of the setup and take down fees from the venue. The groom's mother condescendingly patted me on the arm and said that everything would be okay because Jane's our workhorse. After a bit more conversation, I found out that the plan was for the bride and groom to leave and then the bridesmaids and groomsmen to stick around and doing everything from cleaning up the trash to moving the furniture back to where we'd gotten it. Toward the end of the party, almost everyone had left and I realized that the two groomsmen were so drunk that they were going to be useless and it would again be on the bridesmaids to clean up and put all the furniture back up the stairs. I went to tell the bride goodbye. Judging from her slightly panicked expression and the Oh, you're leaving? You're leaving now? Questions? I realized that she definitely expected me to move the furniture back, but didn't want to say anything while surrounded by people. So I left, and my phone was blowing up as I was driving down the mountain. The other bridesmaids were texting me, and Vanessa's mother left me an angry voicemail about how I was bailing on my duties as a bridesmaid. The next day, I woke up to a massive paragraph from Vanessa that said it was my fault they had to pay the $500 cleanup fee because they weren't able to get everything put back in time. Am I the asshole for leaving a wedding early as a bridesmaid and causing the wedding to get charged $500 for a cleanup fee? My mom passed away last year, so now it's just me, 15, my sister, 19, brother, 14, and dad, 43. My parents got together when they were in school, and they've stayed together all their life. They were amazing parents and basically had the perfect love life before my mom got sick. I always wanted to find a love like them, just the one person I would be with all my life. I was always really close with her and miss her so much. My dad said the same and promised that he'd never love anyone else like he loved her. However, my dad came to us last week and talked to us saying that he wanted to get with our aunt. She's been helping since mom died. We've spent a lot of time with her and our cousins. Apparently, dad and her fell in love now and want to be together. Obviously, I was furious and told him that he couldn't and that he would be betraying my mom. My brother agreed with me, but our sister thinks it's okay somehow and try to get us to listen to dad's betrayal. My dad promised my mom that he wouldn't get with someone else. If it was someone new he found, then maybe I could forgive him, but it was my mom's sister. My mom would never accept it. I would never date my sister's partner. It's disgusting. He's just betraying her in a horrible way. And like, what about our cousins? Are they gonna be our siblings now? It's all so weird and wrong. My dad tried to talk to me about it, but he won't really listen and he thinks it's fine. If he really loved my mom, then he would never do this. I told him that he's not my dad anymore if he cares more about sex than 
mom and have just refused to talk to him anymore. I want nothing to do with him and I don't care if it hurts him. He deserves it. My sister keeps telling me that I'm being unfair and selfish and to give dad an honest chance on this. But he made my mom a promise and there's no way breaking it with her sister is right. Am I the asshole for not accepting my dad dating my aunt after my mom died? I'm a 21 female college student. My dad's stepdaughter is 18 turning 19 soon and expecting a baby. She has no idea who the father is and she's been left behind by her friends who are all in college after graduating last year. She never went and stayed living with my dad and her mom. Now she's pregnant, doesn't have a job, and isn't in school, but she's planning to go now, which I don't know. I don't believe that, but I know my dad wants to. I transferred and I now live about an hour away from my dad. Because I'm so much closer now, he wants me to help out his stepdaughter, give her a place to stay some nights so that she can get away from her house and maybe be a sister to her, offer to be an aunt to her baby. She and I have never gotten along and I personally think she's a spoiled brat and I don't consider her family even though by marriage she is. But we never treated each other like sisters and have never counted on each other as such. She regrets that now. She told me as much. She realizes that I have people in my life who will be there for me in a heartbeat which she doesn't have outside of her mom and my dad. I told my dad that I wasn't interested, that I'm happy where my life is at and I don't trust her to follow through nor do I care enough about her to reach out. It's the honest truth. I don't care if she tries or not. She's not important to me. It upset him because he wants more for her, and he wants me to want this so badly. However, she wasn't part of my life for as long as she was in his. I was 15 when I moved in with him after my mom died, and before that I saw him a few weeks out of the year. My dad was upset but not angry. His wife, however, thinks I'm a bad egg, to quote her, which gave me pause. She said family helps each other. Wouldn't I want her to help me? The answer to that is no because I've seen where her help leads to. Then she talks about how her baby is special and important and I should cherish her. She told me that only bad eggs refuse to help. I might be wrong now, but I consider her that way of calling me an asshole and I only entertain that because my dad is hurt. Am I the asshole for refusing to help and support my dad's pregnant stepdaughter? I'm 23 and my brother John, 29, is getting married later this summer. We've never really gotten along. We always fight, but ultimately, we're family. John is engaged to his fiancée, 27, Carol, and they had a baby about two months ago. I've got to be honest, this baby is not cute. Normally, I wouldn't say anything, but Carol will not shut up about her baby. My family got together recently to do updated family photos, and Carol wouldn't stop gushing about how adorable her baby is. During each location, Carol would insist on making sure she and her baby were front and center. The photographer even asked her a few times to move so that different people could be in different positions, but she refused nearly every time. When the photographer was doing photos of just my parents or just me and my brother etc carol would ask if he wanted to hold her baby just all around being very pushy and annoying i could also kind of tell that my parents were getting annoyed but they're very polite and non-confrontational i finally decided to say something when the photographer wanted to get a photo of me and my mom and carol loudly said something along the lines of the baby making the photo look so much better i snapped at her and said your baby isn't that cute just let it go she got super quiet and didn't say much for the rest of the photo session john didn't say much either but he wouldn't speak to me and glared at me a few times during the session Afterwards, my mom pulled me aside and said that what I said was completely out of line and that I needed to apologize to Carol and John. I completely disagreed and said that Carol needed to stop shoving her baby in our faces even if the baby is part of our family. I refused to apologize and Carol, John, and my parents haven't spoke to me since the incident, which was about a week ago. I don't think I'm the asshole here because everyone was getting annoyed and I'm just the one who spoke up. Am I the asshole for telling my future sister-in-law that her baby is ugly?